Hello makers and welcome back to another vlog. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where each week I share what I am currently making, whether it be knitting, sewing, crochet, cross stitch, whatever creative rabbit hole I may be going down at the moment, as well as a look at what I'm making for my small shop where I create project bags and curate tools for makers like you. My hope each week is to encourage and inspire you to nourish your own creativity and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you? I hope that you are well, that you've had a wonderful week. I am doing well. I have a little bit of progress on some knitting to share with you today. And what I thought would be really fun today would be to actually share some pattern ideas for Halloween. It feels like it might be a little bit late because Halloween is tomorrow and I'm sitting down to chat with you all on Sunday morning, but I am deeply in the Halloween spirit and mood today. So I thought that would be fun to take a look at some patterns that have caught my eye as of late. So without further ado, if you haven't already, grab your knitting or stitching and a lovely beverage, which I just made a lovely cup of pumpkin spice latte, some coffee for the morning, and let's catch up. Before I share those patterns with you, I wanted to give you an update on my latest project. I have it sitting in a little drawstring bag. This is uh, one that's in my shop currently. There are a handful of these. This is from the Booze House collection. And I just couldn't resist making myself one. It's just so sweet and charming. So my current knitting project, my really only active knitting project at the moment is a cowl. I cast on a beautiful skein of yarn called Falling in Love is the Colorway. It's a collaboration between Earth Tones Girl and Woolens and Nosh. Here it is all skeined up. It is a self-striping yarn, uh, totally inspired by fall, hence the name Falling in Love. And it is 90% Superwash Target and 10% Nylon on a three ply. So it's nice and plush and just perfect for a cowl. I thought it's for socks or a cowl. It's just, I love the yarn. And here is the progress. I actually put on a progress keeper because I felt like I didn't hardly knit at all this past week and between all the other projects I have going at the moment. So I thought, oh, a progress keep progress keeper this is what, <laughs> what these beautiful sweet little things are for this one is a pumpkin spice latte um, that I got I think in 2017 from Rhinebeck and it's by Sucra Sucra miniatures so so sweet and the cowl yes so I knit about another half amount I would say uh, I am using the pattern tail as old as time it's a cowl pattern by uh, Anne Valley of Little Skein in the Big Wool I have made this pattern before in the past uh, using a couple of self-striping skeins uh, inspired by Beauty and the Beast hence Beauty and the Beast hence tail as old as time it's a really cool pattern and I finally figured it out. I hilariously cast it on wrong a couple of vlogs ago, which was really funny. But once you kind of get into it, it's really, really lovely. Um, I chose to do Magic Loop because I really like the uh, kind of reinforced edge that it gives, but you could easily put it on um, 16 inch circulars and knit, 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 knit in the round. Um, and uh, you can always do a provisional cast on and then Kitchener stitch, um, but I really like this without giving too much away because it is a paid for pattern, but you do um, on another pair of circular, circular needles, you'd use Judy's magic cast on and then you kind of keep the stitches live there. And then what I did this past week after I chatted with you all is that I didn't do a three needle bind off. I kept saying that it's actually three needle decrease. So I did that and then you put it on some waist yarn. So now I'm down to just one pair of needles and it truly is just like a giant sock <laughs> doing magic loop. 
Um, and it's just wonderful to pick up at the end of the day for the most part. And then I did do a little bit of train knitting as well on my commute down to work. Um, I go down to San Francisco a couple of days a week for work. Um, and I, yeah, it was really, really fun to bring on the train, especially at the end of the day, just to chill out and knit. It was wonderful. And I might've done it in the morning one on one of the days too. It's getting so, but that that's basically the progress for this week. Um, so yeah, it's just beginning so dark earlier in the evening and it takes longer for the sunrise to the sun to rise. And so taking the train has been a little harder <laughs> this past week, especially it was a lot of sunrise knitting I think yeah I must have been knitting on Wednesday because I actually shared a photo over on Instagram um, of me working on the cowl at sunrise so <laughs> but it does make for a beautiful commute it is a beautiful commute down there and it is lovely to have some knitting or some stitching sometimes I have not made any progress on my uh, cross stitch little ornament it's just on hold until I get uh, holiday boxes out for my shop but um, I did hilariously, you might have already seen, uh, decided to display it for Halloween with my Halloween tree, which I actually decorated finally this morning. I was like, I have to do it. It's the day before Halloween. So I got all my other ornaments out and several ornaments that you all have gifted me over the years and I just cherish and love so much. So thank you. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to grab another sip of coffee and then let's look at some patterns. Oh, and before, y'all, I'm wearing knitwear. <laughs> I feel like it's a rarity, but I'm finally up in a climate. I moved up to the Sacramento area in California and it's hotter up here, but it's also way colder, believe it or not, um, than where I was living before. Mm -mm -mm. So today, since it's the day before Halloween and it is quite chilly, I'm wearing my Hocus Pocus shawl, which I uh, used a pattern called the Peacock Shawl. I'll have links down to everything that I share today down below in the show notes. Um, but oh, I love this shawl. It's just a huge, huge shawl. And I used four skeins of yarn. I think I had scraps left over, but a good chunk of the amount of the yarn from the skein. And this is yarn by Legacy Fiber Arts, uh, inspired by Hocus Pocus. It's from their original collection from when they opened their shop, uh, Sue and Chelsea, um, back in 2016, I think it was. And I cast this on. Oh, look how big and massive and beautiful it is. Oh, I love it. It's got a, a slip stitch pattern all throughout and like this eyelet kind of spine down it and it's got a three by three rib and I think it's an I-cord. Yes, I'm a big fan of the I-cord. There you go. Um, so what was I saying? Oh yes, Hocus Pocus inspired because I love Hocus Pocus. And yes, I have seen Hocus Pocus too. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm pulling up which colorways on my Ravelry project to have it all queued up here um, to tell you which colorways I did it in. So I did it in Winnie, which is this one. And then the next one is Mary, which is this red one. I've got some gray hair there. <laughs> and then I have Sarah, which is this kind of candy corn orange and cream and red one and then spell book which is this one and they're all on a uh, cozy toes well a couple are on cozy toes bases and a couple are on snazzy toes uh bases which means there's some stellina in it i think that's the spell book and mary have the little bit of there I love my Ravelry project page. It's so cool to see pictures from me making it in the past. And of course, I shared the process all on the vlog. So you can take a look on past episodes if you want to. If you haven't been part of the journey already. It um, 
is also lovingly called the supreme pizza shawl because <laughs> as I was making it some of us were like hmm, it kind of looks a little bit like a supreme pizza color rays <laughs> put all together but I also just I think of hocus pocus and feel so warm and cozy and love it love it so now another sip of coffee and let's get to the patterns so I was thinking the other day I feel like I don't have a lot of making to share at the moment just because it's just that time of year um, where I'm making a lot of things for you all for the shop um, and I thought you know but I also love sharing pattern ideas and things that catch my eye in case you just haven't uh, seen it yet on Ravelry or you're looking for a little bit of inspiration it's a lot of what I watch fellow maker vlogs to do is to to get some ideas and some inspiration so I thought it would be fun to do it uh, for Halloween specific patterns I already had some in an uh, old favorites bundle um, for Halloween in Ravelry some that I took out of the, <laughs> the bundle because I was like that is not my aesthetic or my style anymore but some that I loved and then I perused online and found some that I've uh, just hadn't added to that bundle that favorites bundle on there um, but I wanted to and some others that just like took my breath away and are just amazing so without further ado in no particular order of favorites here are 10 Halloween patterns for crochet or knitting um, for you to make for Halloween spooky season so the first one is actually quite realistic but I love it my my inner gothic girl loves it so much it's called heart <laughs> uh, it's by Kristen Leggett uh, it is from Nitty from an old magazine called Nitty uh, from their winter 2008 2008 issue and it's a knitted heart <laughs> and it, I've had this it's a free pattern and I've actually had this in the favorites bundle for some time I think from when I originally um, I probably could look up the date on here of when I put it in my bundle but I had it uh, from when I first started knitting in 2015 2014 2015 so I love it. it says I created this heart for Valentine's Day and I wanted something lovey-dovey to celebrate the day um, but I love that it's just so realistic you could put some back stitching on it to kind of add a little bit more like one of the photos shows um, and it says it's a fairly simple construction knit all in one piece and is a quick knit uh, project despite the small gauge and yeah I just think it's really really cool so that is a first little Halloween spooky it would be kind of fun to have a bunch of them like for decor maybe like if you have Halloween parties every year I think it'd just be really cool the next pattern is a shawl pattern that I've had in my favorites not necessarily in the Halloween bundle but in my favorites for a little while it's by one of my favorite pattern designers Amba O'Brien I've made one of her patterns a linen a cardigan a couple of years ago that I adore um, and this shawl is called the betwixt shawl and it's just this really cool angular shawl that has skull lacework on the border uh, and then the top portion of it has this really cool kind of art deco-y um, not quite chevron like diamond um, kind of pattern that's just really cool classic but with a little bit of pop with the little skulls at the bottom it's just something you could wear year-round if you're a goth girl at heart like me <laughs> or yearn to be one um, but it's also also just it would be really fun to wear all throughout October uh, a few highlights from the Ravelry page oh I love I'm looking at some of these photos of the different colorway kind of combinations that you could do with it as well um, but it does say a shawl to keep you cozy when the veil between the two worlds is at its thinnest so it is Halloween inspired betwixt hence betwixt in honor of our place in the cycle of life and death betwixt 
contrasts a floral mosaic pattern uh, edged with delicate lace featuring a skull motif. And the northern hemisphere at this time of Halloween reflects the darkening of days and the final harvest before winter sets in. Whereas in the southern hemisphere, Halloween falls as spring is bursting forth and our days are filled with light and new life. Choose between the original fingering weight betwixt shawl or the simplified DK weight version. So really cool that there's two versions with like depending on maybe yarn that you have in your stash. Um, both were designed to make the most of a 12 color a 20 gram mini skein set plus full contrasting skein or choose the three color option for a completely different result and then try to stop at just one. So that's really cool too if you have any mini skeins which I have many and I am about to get more because I too will be getting yarn advent boxes coming very soon. Um, I think that would be really cool to make with a mini skein version. So yeah more info on the Ravelry pattern page. I'm sure on her website she probably also sells it as well but yeah another really cool Halloween inspired pattern the next one I just found yesterday and it made me it makes me giggle so much I would love to make a whole bunch of these and put them in a little bowl they're called gruesome knitted eyeballs <laughs> and it's by Mary Jane Mucklestone it's a free uh, pattern and the description says, just the thing for Halloween, but good for any occasion. They make great gifts, ornaments, and cat toys. So that's another idea as well. I just think they're so cool. I definitely wanna download this pattern and make it at some point. I just think they're so cool. It would be really cool to put them with all my little, other little things that I have over there by my Halloween tree, my smaller Halloween tree. Someday I'm still searching for a holiday all holiday tree but yeah this was a really cool pattern the next one i also found yesterday and i my went <gasps> these are really cool these are witch boots slippers so it has a color work pattern of like little witch feet and boots um kind of that kind of traditional like curly q um kind of boots similar to like wizard of oz so it is a paid for pattern it's by anna Rajenchko. Regen rod chenchko uh it, it was published in woolly wood design and it looks like it needs a sport weight uh and that says that the slippers are worked in the round from the heel to the toe and the pattern includes a written description and also charts. I love it when patterns have both charts and the written pattern as well, because sometimes my brain wants one or the other. Um, the knitting pattern includes uh, the usual, the charts, ooh, video tutorials, etc. cetera. Um, and I'm kind of scanning for some details here. It kind of, she gives you a lot of details of like how the, the um, slippers are made but I just taking a look at them they're just oh they're just so so cute like you could choose like a variety of different colorways I really like the earth toned colors that were chosen for the sample and then I love on the bottom it looks like a slip stitch or something um, for the bottom of the foot um, which is really cool yeah i just think these are so sweet you could totally wear these around all throughout the fall really <laughs> when i would wear them pattern number five to share with you all is the halloween skeleton gloves and i loved these because of how um deceptive and subtle they are sort of kind of so on the front of the glove it looks kind of like your standard kind of swedish nordic uh color work uh glove um with like a snowflake and just just really really traditional and beautiful but then you switch it to the palm and it's skeleton so it's got color work to make it look like all of the fingers for uh, all of the you know the bones <laughs> of your hand and they're just oh they're so cool i do not know if i will ever be brave enough <laughs> to make these making gloves really intimidates me um which maybe 
something means that I need to take up the challenge and do it at some point soon. But um, I just really love how these look. They're so, so cool. So believe it or not, this is a free pattern. It's by Don Kinsey uh, and it uses fingering weight yarn. I can't believe this is a free pattern, but it's amazing. Um, and the description says these gloves are pretty and traditional on the outside and fun and a little bit spooky on the inside. They will keep your hands warm from Halloween through the whole winter. The size can be easily changed by changing the size of your needles or yarn. Oh, that's interesting. The pattern is written for the experienced knitter or one who seeks challenges. So yes, uh, my intuition of this would be a challenge is correct, but uh, something to strive towards and I'm glad I have it in my favorites for the future. Pattern number six is one that actually one of my friends is making where she just cast off recently and it is the Eyeball Shawl by Stephen West. Many of you might have seen this already. I had seen it in the past but seeing her knit it up uh, it's just, I would love to make one someday. It is so cool looking and the colorways that she chose were so cool. So this is a paid for pattern. It uses fingering weight yarn. Uh, it was published in 2016. Uh, and it, it uses two color brioche on the border. Uh, and it's a massive, massive shawl. I mean, it looks massive on him and he's a tall dude. So Stephen West is, so it, it is truly massive. It's almost like a, a schlanket, if you will. <laughs> um, and it uses, yeah, fingering weight yarn, I said. Um, and it says the eye-shaped scarf uh, begins, oh, it says scarf. No, it's a shawl. It's got, a, yeah, it's a shawl. The eye-shaped shawl begins at the center with circular shaping for the pupil and iris. The white sections are worked back and forth in garter stitch while being attached to the iris. The final border is worked in the round with two color brioche for a graphic eyelash effect. It really does look like an eyelash. It's pretty amazing. Uh, instructions include an optional striped garter stitch border if you prefer simple garter stitch to brioche. But I have to say the brioche really, it, it makes it. It's pretty amazing, but oh, it's so cool. It's such a cool pattern, so highly recommend that one. Pattern number seven is a sweater pattern, and this is The Witching Hour by Hannah Mann. Uh, and many of you have made this or you've seen this. Um, this came out in 2019. I saw many people had made it that year, especially for their Rhinebeck sweater, I believe, or maybe even the following year. Um, and it's so cool. It has, uh, let's see, it's a swancho. So it's not really a sweater. It's like a swancho kind of um, where you have a little bit more fabric uh, sitting right here uh, around kind of the yoke. Um, and it's a little bit roomier. It doesn't like taper down uh, to the waist like a traditional sweater does. It's just a really cool Oh, it's just a really cool design, but I love the color work pattern and it would be really fun to wear all throughout October. Um, and so it has a unique cool weather accessory and an engaging knit uh, featuring stranded color work and learning a learning opportunity for locked floats. I don't know if I've ever knit a locked float before. I'm not sure about that. So this pattern has, the color work is like a bird skull, like a raven skull it kind of looks like. I was trying to look in the description if it straight up says what it is, but it doesn't. Um, but it has lots of details on the Ravelry um, description should you want to see like how much yarn you want to get, all that stuff before you um, purchase the pattern. Um, it's knit from the top down. Uh, and the sleeves are knit onto the body after the fact. So that's something to consider as well. And oh, it's just so cool. And there's so many projects. There's almost, yeah, 400 and almost 450, 447 projects on Ravelry. So a wide range of types of yarn and body types you can look at and 
fits and modifications and all of that. I love it when there are so many projects to kind of peruse and get ideas and inspiration from and maybe troubleshoot as well if you get to a point in the pattern that you have issues with. But oh my gosh, I, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my goodness, I really would love to make this someday. It's a really cool Halloween idea. Pattern number eight is a hat, a color work hat. Super, super cute, very classic kind of Halloween motifs. It's called Halloween Knit Hat. It's by Holly G Hats. Uh, it came out in 2019. It's available for free. It's a free pattern. Um, it says, I wanted all of the kitschy Halloween elements in this hat. So it definitely has like traditional kind of uh, Halloween motifs, as I said. So it features rows of jack-o'-lanterns, black cats, ghosts, and green skulls. The hat requires four colors and quite a bit of color work. This hat is knit for an adult size head, roughly 22 inches in circumference. It's a warm finished product that should keep any parent's ears warm during a trick or treating. And I can't believe I said, if I said that it's an Aran weight um, yarn is what's indicated for the pattern, but just really, really classic. I could totally see um, making this, you know, yeah, I, I love this. I'm glad I added it to my favorites yesterday. And I realized I don't actually have any crochet patterns favorited here, but I did see some the other day. So maybe in the future, if you'd be interested, I'll definitely share some that caught my eye. I definitely want to get into making more crocheted, like little figures and stuff. So um, yeah, I'm gonna keep an eye out for that. So it is very knitting centric <laughs> for this, but uh, moving onward, pattern number nine to share is another sweater pattern, and this is called Arachne, and I just love the simplicity and kind of classic um, structure to this pattern. This has a yoke uh, color work of a spider web, um, and it's by Andy Satterland, uh, and it came out in 2019 as well. Um, it is a paid for pattern and the description says what better circular motifs exist in nature than the spider web. The inspiration is obvious for this top down circular yoke sweater. Um, you use sport weight yarn is what's indicated. Um, and it's stranded color work yoke. Um, when the yoke is in the appropriate depth, stitches are placed on hold for each sleeve with additional underarm stitches cast on. The body is knit down in the round with side shaping. Sleeves are then placed back on the needles and worked down. Uh, and then it goes into more of a description of kind of the construction, but I just really loved it and I love the um, I'm sure you can make the sleeves any length that you prefer, but I really like the three quarter length sleeve that was in the photo for the pattern. And this has quite a few projects as well as about 382. Um, so there's quite, oh, just I'm looking at it and I could like be in here all day. Oh, it would be so fun to get like glow in the dark yarn um, and make that be the spider web and go out uh, trick-or-treating in that. Oh, so cool. So definitely going to be adding that to my queue actually pretty soon, I think. And pattern number 10, and then I have a bonus pattern for you, but pattern number 10 is one that I've been wanting to make for a couple of years now, and that is the Little Witch Charm Set by Susan B. Anderson. And this also came out in 2019. I'm sensing I like was really vibing with the patterns in 2019, but Oh my goodness, I think I've shared this on the vlog in the past as well. It's three really sweet um, little tiny little witches um, and a little black cat. Uh, use fingering weight yarn. Um, her company, her yarn company, Barrett Wool, they have kits for this every once in a while, so I definitely want to get one of their kits. Um, the when I was decorating earlier, you might have seen I put my little pumpkin and acorn and leaf out that are part of a larger set that I still need to continue making of um, little fall kind of little little guys, little things for like a little um, banner. And then someday make for my all holiday tree that I'm on the hunt for um, as a garland. But 
this little witch charm set is just so so sweet and I've seen I've had one friend make this um, and just so so cute like a little broom they each have like little brooms and her patterns are just amazing and so easy to follow and I find anyway um, so highly recommend that and finally a little tiny bonus pattern that just absolutely brings a smile to my face that I definitely want to make as well and this is Halloween ghost I think I just love how it's staged as well in these pattern photos it's by Tatania Koropkova uh, and it's from a Jolly Halloween collection it's called Halloween ghost wire inside arms and legs <laughs> if you're looking for the full title on Ravelry again links will be down below to everything um, and it is a paid for pattern uh, the toys are knitted uh, in the round um, and that's why uh, they say it's advanced beginner knitters um, and it's just oh, so sweet I just love how it is staged and especially there's a picture with like a little cutout smile <laughs> and it's just like yay <laughs> So that's a little bonus pattern for you. So I hope that is a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of spooky inspiration as you're enjoying Halloween, um, either today and, and tomorrow if you've been celebrating all this week. Um, I'm gonna grab another sip of coffee and then just a little bit of lifey chat and a tiny bit of just the usual shop news uh, to wrap up this week's vlog. I'm almost near the end. I am caffeinating it up today because it has been another long week, um, but this weekend has been joyful and wonderful. My holiday box elves are coming here again in about another hour and a half or so. Uh, they were here all day yesterday. It's my mom and my Aunt Joyce, uh, and they're helping me package up all of the little treasures that go in the holiday boxes, which I'm getting ready to send out. Um, I am going to be sending out the international orders the next couple of days and then when I'm back working from home on Friday all throughout the following week I'll be sending out all of the U.S. domestic orders there's quite a few this year quite a bit this year and of course there's 12 treasures in each box so it's a lot of little tiny packaging and stuff and uh, they were saying like how did you do this by yourself last year <laughs> I said well <laughs> I'm not quite sure <laughs> um, where there's a will, there's a way. And it was also a slower pace. I think we were still in a, like a mini quarantine at that point um, at this time last year. So I was at home a lot more than I am these days. So, um, but yeah, it's just wonderful to have so much help and it's a lot of fun. So that's kind of the main stuff going on lifey wise right now. It's, it's just, I hate to say it, but it's all work all the time, <laughs> but it's joyful, wonderful work. Um, I also am getting ready to, this is kind of like quasi lifey shop news. Um, but it is, uh, I'm preparing for the holiday collections. I just this morning ordered some fabric. I feel I'm a little late in the game there, but I just ordered some fabric, um, for the holiday collections, which I'm really excited about. And that is something that I can show you. It's very hard to be a vlogger and have a YouTube channel where I love to share things I am making in hopes of inspiring you all and to be at a time where I can't share the majority of what I'm <laughs> making right now. Um, so I'm eager probably another week or so for that to shift and to kind of get back to the usual. But otherwise, kind of things are just kind of chugging along and are the same as they have been um, you know, pretty full plate at the moment. So uh, I'm excited to get into winter and kind of more restful vibes. And that's going to do it for this week. I hope you all got a little bit of inspiration for Halloween makes either for this year or for next year. If you have a favorite pattern, please do share it down below in the comment section. We would love to see it and have that much more inspiration and things to add to our queue and to our favorite lists. Um, I next week am hoping to share with you all 
ideas for advent calendar mini makes some pattern ideas for things we can make with our advent calendars because as I mentioned I like you uh, many of you are eagerly awaiting in the next few weeks to start receiving yarn advent boxes so looking forward to that to sharing those uh, inspiring ideas with you all um, as always, if you made it here to the end of the vlog, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and joining our community here on YouTube. And if you would like to support the channel and help me to create more vlogs like this and more, uh, consider showing some support over on Patreon and joining our group, our crew over there. Uh, for as little as $2 a month, you can help sustain the channel here and help it to continue to grow. And there's a host of wonderful benefits and more to come. I'm in the process of uh, revamping and relaunching and adding some new exciting benefits over there that I can't wait to share with you all. So without further ado, have a wonderful week ahead. Happy Halloween and happy November. And I will see you all next week. Bye.